So you have the Fool, the Seven of Wands, and the Ace of Cups. You have to be okay with crossing new boundaries, with breaking boundaries, and expanding your horizons on what you believe you can do. You have to make the leap into the unknown. You have to take a chance in order to get something of your dreams. And with the Ace of Cups, this dream might involve love, a new love. And in order to do that, you have to cross over, right? You have to do things that you haven't done before. You have to be comfortable feeling uncomfortable. The Fool energy is here to remind you to stay positive when you're doing things that are new. Are you okay being the foolish beginner in order to become the masterful, you know, uh, master of your own life? Um, in order to become a master at anything, everyone has to start from level one. And the people that progress forward, the people that actually level up, the people that become masters at their craft, they are okay with looking foolish as the beginner. Everyone looks foolish as a beginner, and especially in love. So if you come into some sort of scenario here where there's a new beginning at love, just be okay with not knowing all the answers. Be okay with looking foolish. Be okay with looking like you don't know what you're doing. It's okay. It's, it's really not about what you can or cannot do. It's about how you present yourself during this time of learning something new. Are you one of those people that are too serious to ever try anything new? You know, like you come across certain people that never want to be the beginner at anything. They just want to be the best just starting out of the gate. And those people are truly... I'm not going to say losers because that's a harsh word, but they're not going to be winners. Let's say that. Um, you have to be okay stumbling and falling and getting back up and dusting the dirt off of you and running again. You have to know that sometimes you're going to stumble. Sometimes you're not going to get it right, but that's okay because that is the learning process. Are you really learning if you're not taking any risks? Are you really progressing when you're not taking chances? Are you okay with falling and getting back up again? The Fool shows you that you have to remain positive during times of learning something new. The Fool is an optimist at heart. They have a very childlike energy. They don't know what could go wrong. You know, when you're a kid, and you're playing on the playground and you do these crazy things and you know you throw your body around or you just put yourself in risky situations most kids have never felt yet what could go wrong some kids have you know and then you learn from it but the the, the mindset of a child is i don't even know what can go wrong so i'm just going to live i'm just going to be i'm just going to do and that is the full energy. It's Aries energy. The Aries, you know, people, the energy of the Aries is the baby of the Zodiac. Um, they're not fools per se. They're very strong people. But they have enough tenacity and willpower and mindset and strength to just go after what they need to. Right? They put their head down and they ram forward. They are the ram. You put your head down and you charge forward um, and you have a positive outlook that is the key you can't be a cynic and expect the world to always treat you bad yes that is a smart um, thought to have because the world is not always kind the world is not always going to treat you well or give you respect but if you expect negative things to happen before even giving positive things to even occur or have a chance or even think that there might be a positive outcome, you're already giving yourself the disservice of never trying, of never going after what you need to, of never just getting your dreams. And I'm getting the energy of you have to put your head down and charge forward to get what you want. This person with the seven of wands, it's not fun energy. 
the seven of wands. Seven of wands is hard work. Seven of wands is going up against the odds to get what you need or go where you need to go. This person is jumping between what they knew to what they don't even know. And they're jumping um, without a safety net. They're jumping without a parachute. They're just going for it and they're committed to jumping to the other side. You're leaving your past behind and you're going forward into your future. This is something where you have to make a solid decision 100% do you expect, if you were actually theoretically or literally jumping between two boulders which with a huge downfall, in order to jump, in order to get enough energy or enough confidence to go for the jump, you have to have 100% willpower to do it. You can't just be like, well, um, I don't know if I'm going to jump. I'm just going to run to the edge and then we'll see what happens then. No, 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 no. You have to know that you are jumping. You have to prepare to jump. You have to take a few steps back to, you know, you know, start running to get some momentum. You are 100% locked and loaded on this jump. You are ready to leave the past behind and jump into your future. And with that comes a lot of good things, presence, you know, universal presence um, of love, life, happiness, um, a new chance at opening your heart, a new chance at sharing the world with somebody. Um, but in order to do that, you have to leave your past behind. You can't run to second base with your foot on first. You have to make a commitment, you know? It's like the person in a baseball game, if you know baseball, and um, you know, this person's on first base, they're watching the pitcher pitch, you know, to their other team member, and they're thinking about stealing second. In order to steal second base, you have to commit to knowing that you're gonna run. You can't hesitate. Even two seconds of hesitation will seriously put you at odds. You have to be committed, you have to be headstrong, and you have to be motivated to do the thing. You have to decide wholeheartedly to do it. You can't be wishy-washy because you'll you'll be tagged out. Or people will see your hesitation. If you're if you're like stumbling, you're getting ready to run, people are seeing your energy, they're like take, you know, everyone on the field is looking at the person on first, like, oh, he's gonna run, he's gonna try and steal second. Everyone is seeing your buildup. If you don't go for it in that second, it could ruin everything. So you have to be headstrong and decided on your actions in order to get where you want to go. And especially, it looks like this is love related here. So it looks like if you are wishy-washy um, with someone that you wanna go after or like a new relationship, a new love, or just getting out of a past relationship, you can't be wishy-washy, you have to know are you willing to let go of your past? Are you willing to let go of your past lover? Are you willing to let go of this relationship that you're in in order to get what you really want, which is love? If you're not in a relationship that is giving you true love and respect and dignity and freedom and happiness and safety and all the good things and you know it, you have to let go. You have to run to second. You have to jump, you know, and it's hard to decide that. If you are feeling like you can't decide, you have to really work through your thoughts and your emotions on why can't you decide what is holding you back from jumping into this future. Um, maybe there's someone that you already see here, you know, that looks like they're willing to take the leap with you into this new love, into a new chance at love, into a new relationship. You have to be at a place where you're ready for that. If you're in a relationship now, for example, and you are looking at someone else thinking like, oh, this person that I'm looking at is definitely someone that I want to be with. This is not, you know, the relationship that you're in is not working and you know it, but you're just being maybe lazy, hesitant, 
scared to let go of the past. It's really hard to break it up with, you know, break it off with someone that you've been with for a while. It just because it's comfortable. You have your own repetitions in life. You have your own um, just daily activities, and it just feels okay and safe. But you know in your heart that it's not the right person for you. You have to make a decision for yourself. Are you willing to settle, or are you willing to jump into your future with someone else? In order to get into a new relationship, you can't be in a relationship already, right? Same thing, like you can't have your foot in first when you're running the second. You can't be in two relationships at one time. And if you try, of course, you know, the world is gonna come crashing down on you. It's not, you're gonna be found out. The, the new person is gonna look at you like, what are you doing? Are you a pawn jumper? The old person is gonna be like, how could you do this to me? It's disrespectful. And you could feel a lot of things about yourself at the same time. So the fool is basically saying, go for it. Have a positive outlook on what you can get when you take a chance. Instead of always looking at, oh, if I jump, I'm just gonna fall, I'm gonna break my ass, I'm gonna, you know, everything's gonna come crashing down on me. No, like what about if you jump and you actually make it to the other side? What is waiting for you on the other side? Think about the positive things that you can get from taking the risk. You have to have that foolish mindset of, I can get what I want, I can get what I achieve and what I work for, and what I'm looking at is the positive outcome, not the negative. If you're a warrior, you can't think about the job that you need to do and think about all the things that can go wrong. If you're in war, per se, and you're a soldier, if you go out into the battlefield and start worrying and having anxiety about all the things that could happen to you, it's going to take you over. There's way too many outcomes of bad things that could happen to you that will literally freeze you in your steps. You know how people become frozen with fear? It's because of all their anxiety is taking them over. They're thinking about, oh, this person can shoot me. This person can kidnap me. This person can, can hurt me. I can step on a bomb. I could be blown up from the sky. It's, it's just, it's fear frozen like you're like just a frozen icicle you can't think like that a warrior is one pointed they think about their mission they think about it succeeding you know um when someone says roger that it's not just about receiving the command and doing it it's receiving the command and stating that this job will be completed roger that this will be done you know so it's the confidence and the one pointedness of your mind focused solely on the outcome of what you are trying to do. It's the positive outcome here. You need to go across a field when there's people shooting at you. Instead of thinking about all the people shooting at you, you think about the end result. I need to get to here. You look at that one place where you need to get to and you focus on it and you run. Obviously, you protect yourself as much as you can, but if you have one millisecond of hesitation, you could be killed. And it doesn't have to be that serious, but at the same time, it's the same kind of mentality. Are you focused on where you need to go or where you want to go? Or are you going to be held back by all the things that could go wrong that you don't even know could? You have to put your blinders on, not be completely idiotic, you know, in your actions. You have to think about the things sometimes, make a plan that best suits you, but put a plan in place, put your blinders on to what could happen. And if it comes, you know, if it's love related, if you've come from a bad past, you've had some bad, um, maybe you're coming from a bad relationship right now jump into your future into something that you know that you deserve better if you're in an abusive relationship if you're just in a relationship that is not going anywhere you're basically at the end of the road you have to jump into something new you want to jump into something new you know that you deserve something where there's love involved you deserve love everyone does everyone loves respect everyone needs respect you know so you just have to not look at 
the past for too long. You know, take the lessons and jump forward into your future when it comes to love. There might have been a lot of people that have hurt you, that have uh, given you a lot of nicks in your heart, you know, but your heart is still beating and it's still there and it's still healthy and you're willing to share it with the right person. So take the leap into with faith, basically. The fool represents faith. What is faith? It's having the confidence in knowing without having the answers, without having proof still. You just know that something out there is better for you. So if you're in this position, you have to know that there's someone out there that will be better for you, that will take care of your heart, that will actually be good to you. And you can't bring that into your future. You can't bring a whole bunch of baggage when you're jumping, you know, something, you know, like this. Um, take the lessons. But with the fool's mentality and the faith of the fool, faith knowing that you can actually get um, someone that loves you the right way. Don't take all the, the hurts and the injuries and the, um, the bad times with you into the future. You have to start new. This is a new start at love. And just take the lessons, you know, regurgitate them leave them behind and go forward into a life worth living. Um, and the risk is always worth it. In the end, you always hear people are like, sometimes people are pushed to the edge, you know? Sometimes people ignore the red flags for so long that they're literally pushed to the edge of their life. They're literally pushed to the edge of the relationship or the edge of their own personal endeavors. Um, some people are forced to change. Some people make the change for themselves. Whatever the case is, if you feel like you need to make a jump, remember to have the faith of the fool with you on your side and also um, the strength of a warrior where you are focused on what you need to do, your, your mission here. And if your mission is finding someone that truly takes care of your heart, then you have to have enough willpower and strength and motivation to focus on that and jump forward into your future. Let's just pull a couple more cards here. Is there anything else we need to know? the high priest is coming out it's all about your intuition it's all about um, knowing thyself it's all about using your mind body and soul for your advantage your body is so intelligent it's more intelligent that we give it credit for it heals itself it gives you signals psychically it gives you signals you know about your health about people around you, about what you need to do. Sometimes you take, you get hints in your dreams about what you need to do in life. The High Priestess is here to tell you that you must listen to yourself when it comes to, to your life. If there's something that you need to do and you know you need to do it, you know, remember to stay positive in um, knowing that you actually have a 50-50 chance of achieving your dreams. That's the worst kind of, um, odds here 50 50 you know you flip a coin you it could go well it could, cannot go well so stay on the 50 percent of like the the glass that is half full because those people actually get to achieve what they're looking for if you are always looking at the at life like the glass is always half empty like oh every relationship i get into is just it's terrible or you know, it always it turns out bad or, you know, I've, I've had such bad luck in the past. Well, why is my future going to be any different? Take that out of your mind. You know, you're not giving yourself the chance to jump correctly. If you have all this weight on you and all the baggage just, you know, dragging off of you, how are you going to jump into something new, into a love that is worth living? Um, that's the energy that I'm getting here. It's like maybe you're having dreams about what you need to do or the actions that you need to take going forward. Listen to yourself. Your, your subconscious speaks softly to you unless you start practicing like the high priestess does 
your intuition. If you are in tune with your intuition, then you know what to do. Ultimately, you listen to it, right? Um, your intuition is very powerful. Everyone's is. The only difference between us as humans is that it's not that we all have different abilities of intuition. It's who listens to it and who respects it. Some people don't even think that it's real or that they should even listen to it or that it's just whatever. But when you learn and you practice listening to your intuition, it becomes extremely powerful. 2112 that I just saw on the clock. So maybe you're getting hints through your dreams. Maybe you're getting hints through your daydreams. Maybe you're getting hints through just your subconscious knowing. When you tune into yourself, into your gut feelings, into your heart, what is your heart telling you to do? These are the answers that are that are bubbling up inside of you and they start very softly and, and small. And if you keep kind of working against your own intuition, your intuition gets louder and louder and then it starts yelling at you and then it starts screaming at you and then it starts banging pots and pans at you and then it starts actually pushing you if you don't listen. And it unfortunately, everyone kind of goes through the process of learning that, the, you know, the hard way where it's like, oh, well, I should have listened to myself. I knew it. I knew this person wasn't good. I knew it, you know, but they still didn't listen to themselves. So you have to take your past mistakes and just bring it into your future. Who cares? You made a mistake. Okay, now listen to yourself going forward. When you start, have a certain feeling, when you're around a certain person, or maybe this is a feeling about your, your past relationship, just take the lessons and progress going forward. If, if you feel like this again in the future, just listen to it next time. Your intuition is here. It's your spirit guides helping you. It's your inner body helping you. Your body is so intelligent. So don't discount that when you're making decisions on life. Look at this. Look at this. Look what happens when you listen to your intuition. The Ten of Cups comes out. You make the leap. You stay positive. You have a new chance at love. But this is not just a new chance at love. This is a new chance of love forever. The Ten of Cups is basically the end. It's beginning of love and the end of love. This is something where if you take the right chances in life and you and you take the um, opportunity or you make the opportunity for you to give yourself a new chance, look at what happens. You, 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 you really tune into your intuition. You stay positive on, on what could happen for you and you get a new chance of love, which really turns into a happily ever after. The Ten of Cups is happily ever after in love. This is someone that might want to marry you. This is someone that you want to marry. Going from the one to the 10, you will progress so fast when you start taking chances on yourself and knowing that you're doing the right thing for yourself. When you really truly listen to yourself and your intuition, look at what could happen for you. You get, you get the wifey, you get the husband, you get the kids playing in the in your backyard, you get the home life, and you're just like, oh, look at what we created together. We have it all together. And it just signifies that you can really truly farm your dreams, you know, into reality. You can truly grow whatever you need to grow in your, in your life just by having the right mindset and taking the chance and doing the actions that you need to do, staying focused on what you want. Three of Swords reminds you to, you can't have two relationships at the same time. That's what I'm getting from this, okay? So if you're in some sort of relationship that you know is not good for you and you, you've basically already decided in your heart and in your mind and in your soul, your intuition tells you that it's not good for you, your rational mind tells you that it's not good for you, whatever it is, 
you know in your heart and in your gut that is not good for you, you have to take the leap forward, especially if you want love. And this shows that you will gain much rewards from doing that for yourself. It's about yourself first. Do you treat yourself well? Excuse me. The Three of Swords is third party energy, especially coming with love. There's heartbreak involved here. So maybe you've been heartbroken. Maybe someone cheated on you and you're still with them. Why would you do that? You know, why would you want to stay with someone that cheated on you? I know everyone's situation is different and there are some exceptions to the rules, but for the most part, if someone already cheated on you and broke your heart and you're still staying with them for because you're just scared of new, of, you know, like your new life or your new, what you need to do now or just like picking up the pieces or you're just kind of in denial, you got to jump. You got to take a chance on yourself in order to get this Ten of Cups, this Ace of Cups and the Ten of Cups. Come on. You know, look at, look at your future and what you can jump towards instead of looking at your past and what you need to sweep up and, you know, uh, it's just a big mess behind you. It's like someone went into your house and had a party and ransacked it and there's stuff everywhere. There's fingerprints on the walls. There's garbage everywhere. All your furniture is ruined. You know, there's cigarette butts and, and beer bottles and whatever. And it's kind of just like, okay, well, I could just stay in this filth <laughs> or I clean up, or um, I just don't have a party again, or I just, I don't, I, you know, like, I'm, you gotta clean up the pieces, you gotta clean up your life um, in order to move forward. Um, it just looks like there's a big mess behind you when it comes to love, especially here. And you can't, like I said, you can't keep all the baggage on you when you're jumping into your future, you gotta let it go. And if someone isn't treating you well, you got to remember to have faith knowing that there are people that will treat you well. You are worth being treated well. You are worth a good relationship. You are worth um, someone who also sees the value in you. There won't be third party energy in the Ten of Cups. You see, there's only two people here in their family. There's not like two people and then there's like a, you know, a thought in the background, you know, for the weekends kind of deal. It's none of that energy. There's no sneaky energy with the Ten of Cups. The Nine of Swords. So like, like I said, if you're tired of being up at night, wondering about this relationship, wondering about the person that you're with, um, or just you're just kind of heartbroken over being cheated on, you're heartbroken over being used, or you're just heartbroken over the fact that you gave it a try with somebody and it didn't work out. Whatever it is, it's giving you anxiety because you're staying in this energy. You have to break out of that energy and leave um, in order to give yourself the chance of real love. If you stay in an energy of anxiety, of heartbreak, of sorrow, of never knowing where you, you know, what's going on with your other person. You're, you're at home at night on a Saturday and this person is out with his quote unquote friends. You know, what is he doing? You know, like, are you guys together? Are you always wondering where the, this other person is or what they're doing behind your back? Um, intuition is strong. Sometimes you, you might already know that you're being cheated on without having the proof. You just kind of can feel uh, your person um, just searching elsewhere or giving themselves elsewhere besides you. You're tired of this energy. If you want to get rid of this anxiety, of this third party anxiety, of, of just trying to always have to fix things, sometimes it's good to just let it go and jump into your future. Um, you have to listen to your intuition. If your intuition is screaming at you, telling you like, there's a reason why you feel this way, Maybe pay attention to it. Oh my cat. <laughs> Let's just pull one more here. Oracle. Was... <sighs> I literally just pulled this card before and it's coming out again. 
and it's all about faith today. It says fly with faith. Trust your sturdy wings and know that the universe is working its magic on your behalf. So this, this reading is all about faith. It's all about knowing. It's all about being in tune with your intuition. It's about knowing when to take the leap forward. It's knowing about when to take chances, when to give yourself new chances, when to give yourself the ability to have love the right way. If you're not getting love and you, and you know it, I would say just have faith in knowing that the future holds exactly what you wish for. And if you are focused on your future and focused on your dreams, your goals, the reality that you want to live in, have faith in knowing that once you jump, you'll find it. And even more so than just finding a new chance, you might be finding someone that feels the same exact way where you really just can enjoy all the love that you create together and enjoy knowing that you took the chance and it worked out more than what you expected it to be.